precise location of this place remains a mystery. Plato mentioned that it was beyond the Duchy of Gadira and situated between Africa and America. Legend has it the place vanished suddenly, swallowed by the ocean as a result of some disaster or the wrath of the gods. This is the mythical Atlantis. With some rare exceptions, Atlantis has always been sought in the Atlantic Ocean or along its shores, but it's yet to be found. After all, it is mythical for a reason. However, in 1986, an accidental discovery off the coast of Japan stirred the minds of seekers. Many wondered if perhaps we've been searching in the wrong place for centuries. A structure resembling a pyramid with tunnels, stairs, terraces, and covering an area of several football fields shocks us with its clearly artificial forms. However, the depth prevented detailed mapping of the site at the time. If only we could drain the ocean for a short time. Fast forward nearly 40 years, and thanks to advances in scanning and visualization technology, we can now do just that. Today, we'll see incredibly detailed and realistic images of what could be seen if we drained the ocean at this mysterious place. And when the water recedes, we'll be privy to views that scuba divers could only dream of. Could Yonaguni Monument be the lost Atlantis? Yonaguni Island marks the westernmost and southernmost point of Japan. Large schools of hammerhead sharks gather here in February and March, attracting divers from all over the world. In 1986, Kihachiro Aratake, a professional diver and head of the Yonaguni Island Tourist Association, stumbled upon something very strange during one of his dives. A monument comprised of a system of geometrically precise terraces and elevations transitioning into one another. This led the diver to believe that the monument was man-made. He shared the discovery with the public, and immediately, the media was filled with sensational headlines. The tiny Yonaguni Island quickly became a magnet, not only for divers, but also journalists, science pop writers of varying credibility, and even renowned scientists. There ensued a heated debate. Was this merely an exotic natural formation, or indeed a man-made structure whose origin and purpose remain unknown? What was so special about this place? Why did it fascinate so many people? Pretty soon, you'll find out the answers. Over these several decades, there were a few serious expeditions to the Yonaguni Monument, trying to find compelling evidence in favor of either the natural or man-made theory and they indeed found something. However, before we examine the evidence, artifacts, or conclusions, let's take a moment to appreciate our advanced technology and look at this massive object as it would appear if the water was completely gone. Yep, we are about to drain the ocean now and see what lies at the bottom. So, we've raised the gates of our imaginary dam and the water is now quickly going away. Almost immediately, the top of the mysterious structure emerges as it lies only a few meters below the waterline. The water continues to recede quickly, revealing new levels of terraces to us. They emerge sharply as if jumping out of the water, suggesting that they are very level and seem to be intentionally designed that way. As the water retreats, it reveals even more amazing details before our eyes. Now we see step formations that can only be called stairs. At the same time, stone objects adjacent to the main structure surface from the water. As the receding water reaches the bottom, it exposes cavities in the walls that distinctly resemble entrances to labyrinths, even entire gates or a ceremonial entrance to this whimsical castle. And when the bottom is exposed, a majestic creation of unknown forces stands before us in all its magnificence. Only once we get rid of the water can we fully grasp how huge and unusual this object is. The central structure of the monument is about 43 meters high. One of the sides is 183 meters long. 
the second 150 meters. In close proximity, there are objects with similar designs but smaller scales, reaching about 10 meters high. Finally, we can examine this entire architectural ensemble in detail and revise the conclusions of scientists and enthusiasts about the origin of this remarkable place. The most convinced advocate for the artificial origin of the Yonaguni Monument was Masaaki Kimura, a professor at the University of Ryukyu. The object directly aligns with his scientific interests, as Kimura specializes in marine geology and seismology. Over 10 years of research and underwater dives in search of new facts and evidence, he repeatedly asserted the artificial creation of the monument in academic circles, even putting his name and reputation on the line. After all, he had to cooperate with Graham Hancock. He is a well-known British writer and journalist, the author of over a dozen books and two documentaries where he proposes an alternative view on historical mysteries, searches for unknown ancient civilizations, and explores cultural heritage around the world. In academic circles, Hancock's methods are often labeled pseudoscientific. However, he involved a real scientist in his research, Robert Schock, who made a significant contribution to unraveling the mysteries of the Yonaguni Monument. We'll soon introduce Robert Schock into our story. Hancock proposed an interesting idea regarding the Yonaguni Monument. The tilt of the Earth's axis is 23 degrees, 27 feet. Accordingly, the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn also lie at 23 degrees, 27 feet north and south of the equator, respectively. But it wasn't always the case. It's well established that the tilt of the axis periodically changes from about 22 degrees to 24 degrees over tens of thousands of years. And 10,000 years ago, it could well have been exactly one degree more than today. 24 degrees, 27 feet. At least there is no direct scientific evidence to refute this. Do you know what this means for us? This is the exact latitude where the small island of Yonaguni is located, making this twice as interesting. Hancock concludes that the discovered monuments are sanctuaries built on the Tropic of Cancer. This means the mythical civilization that constructed the monument not only possessed decent terraforming skills, but also had certain astronomical knowledge to create astronomically oriented objects. Of course, this could be just a coincidence. Well then, what arguments does Professor Kimura present? They are all right before us. The monument's shape resembles a pyramid or a castle. The monument has many small steps, about 20 centimeters high. They could have been used as a staircase, whose shape just disarmingly resembles flights of stairs. Some elements of the monument could hardly have been formed by waves and water movement. The monument is bordered by something like a road, nearly devoid of rock fragments, which also testifies against the action of natural forces. The road is surrounded by a stone wall. The professor points out other interesting features. In the lower part, we see something clearly resembling a grand abandoned castle entrance. And indeed, a tunnel leads into the monument. At its end, the path opens up to a staircase. Also, here we see protrusions resembling peculiarly shaped mounds, remarkably reminiscent of a turtle. Moreover, at the top of the monument, we see a strange triangular recess. Its nature and purpose were entirely unclear until we drained the ocean. As soon as the water receded, this place immediately became very similar to an exotic pool, perhaps a relaxation spot for members of an unknown civilization. But despite all these clear indicators of an artificial origin, we needed the most convincing evidence traces of the monument's creators themselves. And indeed, scientists did discover something. During one of the expeditions, researchers found a few artifacts, stones drilled with symbols, primitive scrapers, and even something resembling drawings of a certain animal resembling a bull. 
So this was the time for the advocates to get excited because the traces of the monument's creators had finally been found. However, this is exactly where the disappointments began. Firstly, the findings were quite scarce. Secondly, the research showed that these artifacts didn't belong to the mythical Lemurians, but to the local Ryukyu culture. And their age is no more than two to 5,000 years old. One of the expedition members was the aforementioned Robert Schock, an adjunct professor of natural sciences at Boston University's College of General Studies. The researcher expressed his belief that Yonaguni is a natural structure. Schock states that he found nothing man-made in it during the investigation. He notes that the entire stone structure is a monolith, not something built from blocks. Moreover, this mass consists of sandstone, a type of rock that tends to fracture along its planes. Hence, the straight lines, sharp angles, surfaces resembling brickwork, and so on. But Schock's arguments didn't end there. He continued, possibly not without regret, to refute the optimistic theory. The Japanese islands are a very seismically active region. Therefore, the significant crackability of the rock is not surprising especially at angles of 90 and 60 degrees to each other, leading to the formation of strict geometric shapes, rectangular steps, triangles, and diamonds. However, he voiced the opinion that the monument could have been subsequently modified by humans. So how did Professor Kimura react to this criticism? For a long time, he staunchly held the belief that the monument is man-made. And here's why. Despite the similarity of Yonaguni's rocks, there are very pronounced differences between them. In a confined area, elements of completely different types end up very close to each other. For instance, a face with sharp edges, round holes, a stepped descent, and a perfectly straight narrow trench. If the cause was solely natural erosion, it would be logical to expect identical forms throughout the whole rock. The fact that such different elements are side by side strongly suggested their artificial origin. Nevertheless, even Kimura eventually admitted that the monument could not have been entirely built by humans. At the moment, he also supports the idea that nature created the initial form, which could have then been enhanced by humans. During scientific discussions, the term terraformed even gained a new meaning which researchers used to describe the nature of the object. Originally, this term appeared in science fiction to denote changes that humans make to the landscape and climate of other planets. At present, not all the mysteries of Yonaguni have been unraveled. Some things still remain uncertain. In close proximity to the monument underwater, a cave with a series of stalactites has been discovered. Research using beryllium-10 indicated that their formation ceased at least 10,000 years ago. In other words, this is the time when the sea flooded this part of the land and the monument itself. After all, stalactites cannot form underwater. This dating fully coincides with the estimates of past changes in the global ocean level. Based on this, Geologists estimate the monument's age to be between 10,000 to 16,000 years old. In this light, Graham Hancock's idea that Yonaguni was positioned exactly on the Tropic of Cancer at the time of its creation begins to seem more plausible. The Yonaguni monument is almost certainly not a remnant of Atlantis. However, it's not ruled out that it is more than just an oddly shaped rock.